Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to make a quick video and not spend too much time at all really, but uh, just share something with you to hopefully get you to think a little bit more. This deals more with the futurism stuff. Uh, you know, I've said that there's a lot involved in futurism. Uh, I'm going to have to go through and explain a lot part by part to help people to see that this uh, teaching is false. You know, it involves the rapture, it involves a physical, literal, thousand year reign on earth, it involves the bodily resurrection of the saints, it involves the seven year tribulation, it involves a single antichrist person, it involves the future specific physical mark of the beast, the physical bodily second coming of Christ, judgment seat of Christ for saints only, literal 144,000 witnesses, literal two witnesses, uh, so all that and more. And basically it's just, you know, misinterpreting the book of Revelation, you know, extremely, and other verses in the Bible. And Daniel, I really want to get to the root of, of this stuff, and I think that some of it comes from Daniel, which I haven't really looked at a lot, you know, I know a little bit about it. But I'm going into it more now, these specific I'm seeing some of the specific places where people get confused, uh, and I've seen this before, and I've wondered this before, and maybe you have too. When you're reading Daniel chapter 9, basically where it's talking about Daniel's 70th week, and we're told by the futurists that this speaks of the Antichrist. Okay, this is when the Antichrist comes and confirms a covenant with the Jews, right? But... Uh, it's not speaking about an antichrist, okay? It doesn't mention anything like that. It's talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, okay? And you've probably wondered that before. And I just want to say, yes, that is what it's speaking of. It's speaking of Jesus Christ, okay? This is all a prophecy of Jesus Christ, uh, you know, his coming, him being anointed, and him dying for our sins, okay? This actually gives us... The timing of when Jesus is, you know, when he was anointed, when his ministry was, and when he was going to die. And uh, all that's destroyed when you go for this fantasy, futurist, uh, antichrist nonsense that's very popular, okay? And so I'm going through here an expository on Daniel, and I'll share this with you. <clears throat> this is from the Preterist Archive, which I've mentioned before, and no, I'm not a Preterist, but there's a lot of good stuff on here, and this will get you to think, and I agree with a lot on here, I don't know if I agree with all of it, but I'm taking notes from this and stuff, and I'm going to use some of this stuff for the expository, but I'm not going to go through this right now, but I'm just showing you this if you want to look it up yourself. Just look up Preterist Archive, uh, Daniel 70th Weeks, Future or Fulfilled. Okay, this is by Ralph Woodrow. So you can Google that and find this, and it goes through quite a bit. And it probably doesn't answer all the questions, but it gives you a pretty good idea. And so, you know, we see, uh, let's see, I don't want to spend too much time on this, and I'm still going through it myself, but... You know, Daniel 9.24, we see 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make a reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And all of this already happened. Okay, this was, this is already fulfilled. Uh, know therefore and understand that from going forth up to the commandment, of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, unto the Messiah, the Prince. Who's this speaking of? This is speaking of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Christ, and the Prince. Okay, we also know as Christ the King. And I was thinking, like, there's times, you know, in Isaiah and stuff, we see Christ as referenced to as Prince. And I think that that has something to say with his sonship as contrasted with the Father. We also see Jesus mentioned as King. You know, he is Lord, and he was he was given that authority by the Father. Um... But it also mentions him as prince, and so, you know, a prince is like a son of the king. So, anyways, the Messiah, the prince, this is Jesus Christ, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, okay? 
So Re Jerusalem being rebuilt and stuff, that happened before Jesus came. Okay, that's what that's saying. Okay, from all this that's spoken in Scripture of uh, Jerusalem being rebuilt, and I think that happened like in Ezra, they rebuilt the walls and stuff. It shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. Okay, I think that already happened. And Ezra, that's what I was talking about. And three after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, see, this is why I need to go over this more, what I'm thinking. But I'm going to at least get on some points that I can help point out here. So... We need to realize it says, and after three score in two weeks, okay? And that adds up to um, 69 weeks, okay? Which is, I don't know how many years. So I need to break this down more and stuff, like what what a week is and, and what, what amount of time this represents and everything. But it says, after three score in two weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off. Okay. Now the futurists interpret that this means that on the 69th week, on the 69th week, the Messiah will be cut off. So they think that the 69th week, uh, Jesus died, and then we go into this uh, parentheses phase of the church age unto the 70th week. Okay. But that's false. This doesn't say uh, on the 69th week. Jesus would be cut off, that he would be killed. It's after the 69th week, okay, so it's later, okay, but not for himself, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Okay, so, um, this is a, a place where people get confused too. And you can kind of see why in some ways. But, so we're talking about Jesus the whole time. We're talking about Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall even in tr tr troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah again be cut off, but not for himself. And then the people of the Prince. Who is the Prince? Okay. Whoops. The Prince was just mentioned. I didn't mean to click on that. Okay, I gotta go back. <sighs> Getting all excited here. Clicking away. Okay, we're talking about Jesus the whole time. The Messiah, the Prince. The Messiah, and then again, the Prince. The people of the Prince. Where is it at? Okay. The people of the Prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, Jerusalem and the temple. And so this is where people get confused. This is where they'll say that this is the Antichrist and his people. But there's no mention of the Antichrist or anything. Okay, we're talking about the same person. There's no reason to believe that all of a sudden Daniel, what's written here, is talking about a new person. Okay, we've been talking about Jesus this whole time. There's nothing to signify that a new person is being spoken of. So how could we say that this is God's people that are destroying the city and stuff? Well, uh, there are, let's see, I thought that I put other verses up here. What did I do? Uh, I must have done it up here. I messed this up, but that's okay. So anyways, the people of the prince, uh, so here is a commentary that I read. It says, thus the death of Christ, the angel immediately subjoins the excision of Jerusalem. The people here spoken of are the Romans, and the prince that should come may mean, as some think, the Messiah, the Romans being called his people, both on account of their present subserviency to his will and their future conversion to his faith. Okay. And, um... So we see in other verses and passages where... God mentions uh, having other nations or other people as his people to be instruments of judgment. And here says the destruction of the temple 
results from his death, and the destroyers are his armies, or his people, the Romans. Okay, and there's some passages to look at to support that. Jeremiah 27, 6 through 8, Ezekiel 30, 24, 25. Matthew 22, 2 through 7. Matthew 21, 33 through 43. And I gotta work this all out more. And I accidentally put that in the wrong section. But anyways, the point here really is that the whole time it's talking about Christ, we know that, you know, we should understand that the Messiah, the Prince, that's Jesus, the Messiah, that's Jesus, and the people of the Prince. Okay, there's no reason that we should believe that um, that he's mentioning somebody new. He's talking about the same person, Jesus. Okay, it just doesn't really go with our thinking of how how are these Jesus people when they're destroying Jerusalem in the sanctuary. Okay, so it, it it's in the sense that um, they are his instruments of judgment upon the city. Okay. So it could be the people of the prince, not in the sense that these people worship Jesus, but in the sense that these are the people that Jesus sends. Okay. And he, again, who are we talking about? The prince, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the king. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay. Now it says that he is going to come to confirm the co he's going to confirm the cov covenant with many. Okay. Um, it says confirm, not make. Okay, because the futurists will say that you know the antichrist comes to make a covenant with the Jews or whatever. No, he's confirming a covenant covenant that has already been spoken of in Scripture. Okay, the new covenant. Jesus said in Matthew twenty six twenty eight, for this is my blood of the new testament, or the new covenant, which is shed for many for, for the remission of sins. Hebrews nine fourteen and fifteen. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the new testament, or the new covenant, that by means of death, for the redemption of, trans of the transgressions that were under the first testament, or covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And so there's more that talks about Jesus and the new covenant. He's the messenger of the new covenant. He's the mediator of the new covenant. Okay, mediator of a better covenant. So, Jesus confirmed the covenant. Okay, he did it with um, the Lord's Supper and also with his death. Uh, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Okay, it ceased when... Um, when he died, okay, that's when, you know, the final sacrifice was made. So there were to be no more sacrifices. And in the midst of the week, Christ's ministry lasted three and a half years. So the week is basically like seven years, okay? So in the midst of that, three and a half years, the sacrifice uh, ceased, because the final sacrifice was made. That was when Messiah was cut off. Okay, that's after the 69th weeks. Six, 69 weeks. And so we actually get prophecy being fulfilled, giving us an exact time of when Christ was anointed and began his ministry, and an exact time of when Christ uh, died. Okay, that was all fulfilled. And we see in Scripture and the Gospels talking about the times um, being fulfilled, you know, the time has come that, that the Messiah is here. And, you know, it talked about the time of his death, you know, being fulfilled. And so, this has nothing to do with no seven-year tribulation, no Antichrist, no third temple being rebuilt, none of that stuff. This is all fulfilled, and it's all speaking about Christ. And so, futurists are actually attributing... Um, they're calling Christ Antichrist, basically. 
and they'll make those accusations of you know me and people who would teach this correctly but i mean that's all there is to it this is the correct interpretation is that this was fulfilled um, because they twist things and they add to it as i showed you know it talks about the messiah the prince which everybody pretty much agrees that that's Jesus. It talks about the Messiah again. We're talking about Jesus. And then the people of the prince. And all of a sudden they want to be like, oh, now this is speaking of the Antichrist. No, it doesn't say anything like that. It's just continuing along. It's talking about Jesus. It doesn't mention any other person. Okay, any devil incarnate or anything. That's not mentioned here. That has to be added in. Okay. So, I know there's a lot of other questions, a lot more to answer. I, I want to get through this a lot better. i got to fix what I already messed up here. So, <sighs> that's all for now. God bless.